Hello everyone, this is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Subnautica in our Survival School series. So last episode was kind of frustrating because I set out to try and maybe make some basic base related stuff and do some exploration as far as the Sparse Reef region. But uh, I found out maybe about midway to two thirds of the way through that, you know, my typical navigation technique, as I explained in the last episode, for those of you trying to find your way towards the Sparse Reef, it's actually, I mean, it's correct, but if you are going through the wrong grassy plateau to get to the Sparse Reef, then you're just going to confuse the heck out of yourself. Because typically you can get to the Sparse Reef, and yes, we're going to Life Pod 8 right now. But typically you can get to the Sparse Reef by just thinking, oh, okay, well I'm over the grassy plateau. Yeah, see? Caution. 30 seconds of oxygen Here's a grassy remaining. plateau right here. Actually, wait, we might have just ended up in the Sparse Reef. We'll see how it goes. No, no, of course not. This is, we're actually a lot closer to the Aurora. Oh, crap. Oh, this was not intentional. This was not intentional at all. Oh, no. Ten seconds of oxygen remaining. I didn't pay attention to the direction I was going. So, uh, yeah. We're close to the Aurora now. I was just too far below the surface. I thought Life Pod 8 was in another direction. Hey, buddy. So, my life could very well be in danger right now. There's life pod 8. Interesting. It's floating on the surface, so... Need to be a little careful right now. Here's a med kit. Some disinfected water. I definitely welcome that. I'll go ahead and drink it. And let's have a look around here. It is very dangerous to be in this region of the game by accident. <laughs> it's dangerous to be here at all. I don't hear any telltale roars, so that's good. But you generally want to be careful in this region. Alright, so I'm actually going to, let's see, we're going to head back that direction as rapidly as we can, and on the surface. Because I was just going towards Life Pod 8 like a trooper, like, hey, I'm just going to go this way to start off the episode. But the first thing I want to do, as I mentioned, is actually find our way to the correct grassy plateau region and find our way to the sparse reef on the other side because that is how you get to the sparse reef almost always is okay there's a reef back right there let's change the battery is you find your way through a grassy plateau and you just keep going until you're on the other side of it so that's what we're going to do actually think yeah that's what it was i was going the wrong way so now i finally have my bearings let me show you something that will make this a little easier. As I mentioned in episode one, the floating island is that way. It's towards those guys. We're going to keep going this way because the sparse reef is between the floating island. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think about this, but it's between the floating island and your initial landing location. So that's how you find your bearings. I was just trusting a little bit too much that that particular grassy plateau region that I was in was the right one to traverse. But in fact, it is not. Which is fine. Learning experiences. So we're going to go this way. Where is the landing? Okay, we just went right under the landing pod. That's fine. I'm going to keep going this way. Yes, there are floating lockers and desks. Those have gotten even higher, I think, than the last time I saw them. Weird. But yes, we're going to keep going this direction, towards the floating island. And eventually, I believe, what you're going to see is you're going to see another grassy plateau region open up below us. Which is exactly what we wanted to happen in the last episode. <laughs> Alright, so this is good. This is actually... This is not a grassy plateau just yet, but it looks like we might be heading towards one. Yep, perfect. That's what I wanted to see. Unfortunately, it's a little dark right now. I'm going to try and float above this guy real quick and get some air. I'm just going to go this way. We're going to traverse this region. Hey, buddy. Please don't attack me. I'm tired of you, really. I'd rather not deal with you. I'm also, I don't feel like I'm getting as much light from the sea glide as I typically do. Either that or it's just dark right now. 
as a reef back. Reef backs are quite friendly in general. So we just need to cross this region. Hey! I, I really, I asked you nicely to leave me alone. What did I just say? Caution. 30 seconds of oxygen remaining. We're going to surface and just keep going this way. Power's almost out in the sea glide, which is fine. we got more batteries. Alright, there's the floating island starting to be uncovered, which is perfect because it means we're getting where we need to go. Change batteries. Hey, here's some technology. Let's go ahead and scan that. Filtration machine fragment. This is what I was talking about. So when you come to visit the... All right, the visuals aren't added to the game yet, but when you come to visit this... Oh, there's a giant piece of quartz, too, that we can mine once we have access to the... Um, prod suit. But when you visit this region, it's possible to find... Actually, I just saw some aluminum oxide. Or mercury, rather. When you visit this region, it is possible to find pieces of the filtration machine. Caution. Which is a really nice early game technology to have. I found it pretty early in my last Subnautica series, and it was a huge boon. I wish there was a little bit more daylight right now so I can show you stuff. Oh, hey, here's the Grand Reef. Okay. That's the Grand Reef whenever you find yourself here. That means we are very, very close to the actual zone we've been looking for, which is, again, called the Sparse Reef. And you'll know you're in the Sparse Reef when you start seeing terrain very much like this, but also there's another very telling feature that you want to look for in addition to those technology pieces I was just talking about. So... Looks like several large chunks of quartz. Lots of quartz to be found out here, including smaller pieces you can mine in their traditional way just by picking it up. Okay, good. Here's some pieces of tech. I'm guessing filtration machine. Perfect. Caution. 30 yes, I know. Thank you. Remaining. So we've unlocked it. Power cell charger fragment. That's good, too. Let's go ahead and get that. New All right, we need one more. So this is a power cell charger, not a battery charger. Two different things. Battery charger is, of course, like I mentioned, in the grassy plateau so maybe we can grab that fragment in the or on the way back rather I think we already unlocked the filtration machine so I will stop scanning that okay here we go getting some daylight these little green structures are what you want to look for when you come to the sparse reef because they're a very nice way to get early game lithium without going too far. Now again, obviously in the last episode, I got a little turned around, which is fine. It's going to happen to anybody. And in the process, hopefully I taught everyone a little bit about finding your bearings and which way to go when you're looking for certain biomes. And we actually found our way into the mushroom Caution. forest last of oxygen game. So now we've got the filtration machine, which is what we're here for. I have, let's see, how much room do I have? I have a little bit more room for lithium. So I'm going to pick up some more lithium before I surface here. Emergency. Ten seconds of oxygen remaining. Okay, so we're going to swim to the surface. Lithium is an element that you can use when you're building your first base to dramatically improve the extent to which you can build your base before the hull starts buckling from water pressure. And having lithium early on is a nice kind of way to guarantee yourself peace of mind with that first base that you're building. So consider it a pro tip to go ahead and come out here, as long as you know which way you're going, to the sparse reef in the beginning of the game. Alright, inventory's full. Biodiversity in this region is unusually low. Cause unknown. Alright, so let's head back... We're heading back towards the grassy plateaus. All right, here's a here's the blood reef right here. Oh wow. Caution. Thirty seconds of oxygen remaining. I'm actually going to mark that real quick. We're going to go up to the surface, then I'm going to come back down here and drop a beacon, because this is a nice place to um, to have marked. It's kind of the junction between three different biomes: sparse reef, blood reef, and the grassy plateau. Awesome. So we're going to be right down here, 
Now I'm going to drop this big guy. Let it beacon. No, I didn't want to pick him up. You have to be careful where you're pointing at these guys. Now let's see. Very good. All right, let's go back to the surface, and then we're going to come back down. And on our way back Caution. towards the base, I know, remain. on our way back towards the base, what's going to happen is we need to find the other pieces of the battery charger. Because when we make our first base, which we are very close to being able to do now, actually being able to recharge all these batteries we have is something we're going to be able to do fairly quickly. As long as we have the required tech. So it looks like there's a... Uh, this is... what. What type of... I can't remember what type of uh, deposit this is. Salt, maybe? Just a large salt deposit? Yeah, that's... I think... No, that's a large salt deposit. So what's that? I don't know what that is. I haven't worked out the... Uh, I haven't messed around too much with the large deposits yet. I'm familiar with what they are, and I know where to get the drill on. For the prawn suit. Oh, look, there's a large copper deposit. That's cool. So again, once you have the prawn suit, you can really make use of a lot of the, the stuff down here. Of Again, because we do not have a rebreather, being that deep consumes oxygen pretty quickly. So that can happen. Alright, battery's gone again. And, oh no! Huh, I thought I had more batteries than that. Okay. Well, we're swimming back by our own power. But we're actually not terribly far. Actually, we are terribly far. We're really far. <laughs> but that's okay, because we need to head, we need to be in this direction anyway, looking for additional technologies in this particular section of the grassy plateau, which is a large section of grassy plateau. I'm just not going to go too deep. I'm going to try and spot technologies from above as we swim back. I'm still moving forward. I'm to make sure I maintain a sense of momentum in that direction. But at the same time, I am looking for any technologies on the seafloor. That looks like a big piece of the Aurora, and that's exactly what it is. And another life pod. That's life pod 17, which we already have a signal for, we just haven't visited yet. So, tell you what, I'm going to swim to the surface. Now, I don't have a sea glide, so it might not be too smart to explore too much in there yet. So perhaps I will not. We're closer now. Yeah, this is a giant piece of the Aurora that broke away during freefall. Makes you wonder where it came from, right? Like it's a big old piece of the ship, but 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 where like what piece of the ship? Which which piece is this? Alright, see? Here's the drill arm for the exosuit. We'll go ahead and scan it. This is just a fragment, so probably need to scan one more. But that's okay, because there's another one right there. As I mentioned, <laughs> drill arm, pretty easy to find. Battery charger fragment, all right, very good. How many do I need? Two, is that the other one? Yes, it is. All right, so this is gonna be pushing it a little bit. 30 seconds of oxygen remaining. There it is. All right, let's put that away so that we have maximum swim speed and get back to the surface as rapidly as possible. So we've got the battery charger, which is good. Now we've got pretty much everything we need for a basic base, which we are going to do in this episode. For God's sake. Emergency. Ten seconds of oxygen. Ah, uh, no. That's why I'm swimming. Alright. So let's go this way. Because we need to make that battery charger so that these issues are no longer a thing. Life Pod 8 is a good ways away. Life Pod 8, that's the one we accidentally swam to in the beginning of the episode. So we actually went a good ways. Can't quite see the floating island anymore because we're far enough away from it. Can't see any of the islands, in fact. So yeah, that giant piece of ship, if you can find it, that's a good place to find the battery charger and the drill arm. Some of these fragments have, of course, moved around since the last time that I was hunting for them. But this is, you can always find the technologies in the same general areas. Just something to bear in mind at the beginning of each game. You can always count on the battery charger being, if not in that giant piece of ship, in the area of that giant piece of ship. All 
And yes, it is an inside joke on my channel that I refer to pieces of the Aurora large and small as pieces of ship. I mentioned this before, but just to clarify, Portion. it's not going to stop. <laughs> it's not going to end. Okay, here is a piece of tech, just a solar panel. I think I've already unlocked the solar panel, but just to be sure. Picked up titanium and the inventory is full. That's fine. How much titanium do I have on me? Oh, more than enough. Okay. Alright, All right, so we're pretty close to home now. We're back in the safe shallows. There's the life pod. So now we need to actually think about where we're going to build our base. And I usually... You know, when you build your first base, you want to have it somewhere that is useful to you. Because again, once you have a base up and running, it's a place for you to get oxygen underwater, usually pretty deep, early on. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to head back to the life pod momentarily. And I'm going to put away as much stuff as I can. I'm even kind of tempted to put the sea glide away, but I'm not going to, don't worry. Because I want to grab a bunch of titanium. Basically, I want to grab everything I can I can grab to uh, effectively make the first base. All right, so we've got a bunch of lithium here, which can be useful. I'm going to put the gold away. I'm going to put the salt away, mercury, lead. Don't need any of that. And then I will go ahead and pick up a couple of pieces of quartz. Now with our builder, you can just right-click anywhere. Obviously, we can build a water filtration machine. Right now, all it takes to build a water filtration machine is two titanium. You can expect that to change because that is ridiculous. Like, for the, for the quality of that technology, for it to just be that simple is insane. So what I will do while I'm here is we're going to go ahead and make some glass with the quartz that we have. I think I have some additional quartz in here. Yep, I do indeed. Tell you what, I'll put some of the lithium up so I can transfer the rest of the quartz in. Because we're going to need some glass to build the initial entrance into the base. But yes, location is important. Think when you build your first base. Because, for instance, there's the Aurora, and that direction is the other floating... Is the first floating island, or the only floating island. The first island, if you will. Oh, all that stuff should just be sitting on the seafloor, but instead it's moving upward perpetually. It's so weird. Um, at least it seems like that's what it's doing. It's just... It's just there. <laughs> so that's the direction of the blood reef that we found. And I'm actually going to put my base in this direction. Yes, I know I haven't made the new batteries yet. Actually, I guess I should do that, shouldn't I? I'm excited. You can't blame me for being excited. I don't think I have any copper left either. So what we're going to have to do before we go pick out our base location is pay a visit to the coral tube and make sure we can get some copper. Going to have to drop some stuff too. Tell you what, I'm actually going to drop a couple med kits because I don't need them. I have too many. Right, that's titanium. Don't need it. That's copper. Perfect. All right, so that's enough for one measly battery. We'll have more stuff to make soon. Very much looking forward to building the battery charger. What does it take to build a battery charger? Remind me. Battery charger needs... Pull up blueprints here anytime and... Ten seconds you jerk. Remaining. I'm just trying to read. Battery charger, where are you? There it is. So we're going to need another computer chip, which means one more piece of silver. And then some copper wire. So we'll pay another visit to the reef when it's time to make our battery charger. Just getting some air real quick. Oh no, I came up here to make a battery. That's what I'm here to do. <laughs> I promise I've got my head on straight. All right, let's go ahead and make a battery. And I have mostly dead ones here. But that's enough to go ahead and exchange out. Also, I'm going to need some food. So let's swim down real quick and grab this peeper. This unsuspecting little guy. Hey, buddy. Hey. Oh, hey. Whoa. Oh, oh, okay, you're doing dance with me. All right. Come on. Really? Really? 
I told you, they're nimble. <laughs> Gary fish, these guys right here. I'm going to grab one just for the sake of having it in my uh, PDA. But there's another one. Don't need it. But they are generally the least nutritious fish. Boomerangs are some of the best ones you can get in the initial area. What you really want to look for is a fish that's native to the area near the sparse reef, which is called the Reginald. The Reginald is amazingly nutritious and good to have. All right, so I'm going to come up here and cook that food real quick. And then we really are going to go establish a base, finally. So we've got three different fish. I'm going to eat them all. It is good in Subnautica. FYI, if you ever find yourself catching one of one or many of one type of fish and then all of a sudden getting damaged when you eat too much of it in a row, that is because you need to vary your diet. If you eat too much of one type of thing, you will poison yourself. Be aware of that. It has thrown off many a new player. Like, wait, why did I just get hurt when I was eating? Because you need to have a varied diet. Bear that in mind. Alright, so we're going to head towards the Blood Reef. And I'm, what I'm trying to find here is I want to find the exact spot where the upcoming Grassy Plateau region runs up next to a kelp forest. Okay, well hang on then. Might be over this direction. Yeah, I think we're close. Think we're close. Oh wait, maybe not. Hang on. Caution. Thirty seconds of oxygen remaining. I look forward to not having to worry about that anymore. Just being able to go down and get inside my base and not have this woman yell at me. Okay, well, this is a pretty persistent kelp forest. I was expecting it. Subnautica's terrain is not randomly generated every time, but you land in a different position on it every time such that it does tend to feel like a new map each time you play. Okay, here we are. Son of a... Little bugger. That guy just bit me. I tell you what. Where's our first base going to be? That's a... Big old piece of the ship there. Caution. Thirty seconds of oxygen remaining. Right here. Right, so we're gonna swim up, get some air, then we're gonna come back down and build our base. Just the beginnings of it, because again, we don't have the ability to build that much right now. So let's build a foundation. Well, hang on, let me take a quick look. Oh no, not these guys. You generally have to kind of shake them off. I found that when you get the knife out, you just start swinging it wildly, they will leave you alone. So yeah, now it's dark, so it's a little bit tough to, to build the base in the dark. Kind of annoying, frankly. Maybe I'm going to have, I'm trying to find a, a good spot where I don't feel like that's going to happen to me again. All right, this should be good. Let's do a foundation here. You can see a little bit better here too. Foundation is good because it's going to give you extra base integrity points from the very beginning. See, plus two to base hull strength, total now 12. All right, so let's start with, tell you what, let's start with a glass corridor. Caution. 30 seconds of oxygen remaining. Alright, and I do need a little bit more quartz for the solar panel. And of course the solar panel won't even work right now. But I can build the hatch. So we'll build a hatch so we can get into the base. Now we need to get up to the surface. 10 seconds of oxygen remaining. So now what I need to find is just a little bit of quartz so that we can have the base fundamentally powered. But even before that, one thing I definitely need to do is 
So this base camp alpha. So now we can always find where we've built our first base in Subnautica. Now I have broken one rule here in building this base, to be completely honest. And that is that sometimes it could be a good idea when you're building your first base to not be too far away from your life pod because your life pod is where your only fabricator is. Now you can build a fabricator inside the base. Daylight's coming back now, which is excellent. We do need to get some quartz. So maybe let's look around for some of that nearby. Oh, you jerk. Let's go ahead and get this guy out. Just need to find a couple of pieces of quartz now that our inventory is a little bit less full. It's not much better than where it was, but once we find some quartz, we'll be able to make a... You don't need to have glass, you just need to have unrefined quartz in order to make the solar panel, which of course I found the fragments for in, I believe, the second episode. 30 seconds of oxygen remaining. Get up to the surface. Emergency. Ten seconds of oxygen remaining. Hey there. That is not a sound I wanted to hear. Oh man, especially since I'm out of batteries. Okay. Well, we're gonna swim then. Very soon we're gonna have our actually what I'm gonna do is I'm going to head back this direction and we're going to go ahead and make the we're going to get all the components we need to make a fabricator and to make a battery charger inside the new base. Oh, well, here's life pod 3. I don't think I've been to life pod 3 yet. And I see light inside which implies a PDA that I haven't picked up yet. Here's a fragment of the sea glide. But again, we already have the sea glide, so no worries. Ten seconds of oxygen remaining. All right, so we're gonna swim this direction. So yeah, we're gonna get enough to build our basic fabricator. We're gonna need to pick up some quartz while we're here too. So this is one of the first times in the series where I'm gonna have to kind of make a grocery list, which can be <laughs> both annoying and useful in equal measure. It, you know, just kind of knowing, okay, well, I'm gonna need these items in my base, especially if you are far away. Let's pick up that quartz. Especially if you are far away from your initial base. It could be handy to have. Just knowing exactly what you need. So that you don't dilly-dally too much. So we're going to get everything we need, again, for the fabricator and for a battery charger. And then, of course, we'll go back with enough to have a basic uh, uh, set of solar panels as well. Which means just picking up some quartz, really. Speaking of that, let me go ahead and pick up a little bit more. It's two quartz per solar panel. Yes, I know I've agitated you and you've squirted poison <laughs> poison pellets at me, but I will I will ignore them for the time being. There's some more quartz right there. Ten seconds of oxygen remaining. I know, but I'm only twenty meters below the surface, so it is okay. All right, there's our life pod. Let's take one of these. Gonna need to address our water situation soon too. Let's chase after this peeper. Come here, oh, you little jerk. These guys are sometimes a lot harder to catch than they should be. But yes, I will go ahead and cut this episode here. And in the next one, we are definitely going to gather everything we need to actually enter our base for the first time. I'm going to shut this thing up. I feel like at the end of every episode, that thing is yelling at me while I'm trying to talk. <laughs> so what we're going to do... Detected. Are you done? Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to grab the stuff we need for the fabricator and the stuff we need for, again, the battery charger. We're going to go back to the base, and that will actually give us the ability to have more of a sustained presence at that base and also be underwater without having to constantly surface. And especially because we built our base down there closer to the bottom of the 
uh, particular zone that we're in, mean, uh, mainly the grassy plateaus, but also we're right next to a reef, that will enable us to gather a lot of resources that we need uh, for some of the more advanced stuff we're going to be making soon. So thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. I upload new episodes in Survival School every day at 6 Eastern Daylight Time, which is GMT minus 4, for those of you not in the States. And comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you in a bit.